Hey, um, yo, Serge, before you go there, I, how did you get your deal? That's that's where I'm really trying to go with this conversation because I, I I know so much uh, before, I know so much after, but I don't know how you were actually discovered. Like, how did you actually get your deal in Def Jam? So, I was, like I said, I was about let me see. And a friend of mine named Dave Funkenklein, may he rest in peace, was running the rap battle part of the New Music Seminar. New Music Seminar, for those who don't know, was a big music convention um, that was done in the late 80s in New York. It was run by Tom Silverman, who was the head of Tommy Boy Records. And it was a basically a semi four day seminar that talked about the music business, the change in the music business, what's different. What's... And at the end, they had a DJ battle and an MC battle. Um, so Funk and Klein asked me to be in the MC battle. And uh, I was killing people. I was just, I was murdering people. I mean, I'm just gonna keep it a bean. I was just murdering people. And I'm in the, I think, quarterfinals, quarterfinal, semifinal. Just about to move on to the final or semifinals, whatever. And uh, I did this rhyme and I get off stage and I feel somebody like massaging my shoulders. Now, it, my mother and father and, you know, were there at the show, at this battle, at the Hammerstein. And I feel so, so I figured it was my father. So I put my hand on his, my hand on his hand and I it, immediately as I felt that I knew it was my father's hand, you know, and I turn around and it's Russell Simmons. And he says, hey, search, if anybody asks you, tell them you signed a Def Jam. Don't walk out of here without telling anybody you signed a Def Jam. Um, and that's how we, we got our deal. Um, You're telling me Russell Simmons discovered you himself at New Music Seminar. Yeah, but he didn't really discover me. I knew Russell and Russell knew me. We knew each other for a long time. Um, we had already, I was already signed to Rush Management and then they, they let me go. Um, so we had already known each other, like, you know, and again, to keep it honest, like me and Russell would smoke weed together at the world. Like we would see each other at Save the Robot. Like I'd be with some cute chicks and Russell would be like, go search, introduce me to your home girl. Like, you know, like we knew each other from the club scene and I would always mess with him. And I would always say, yo, you're gonna sign me. I'm gonna be the next group you sign a Def Jam. Like, and I would, and he'd be like, fuck out of here, white boy. You know what I mean? Like that, you know. And then I'm battling, and he said, Yo, if you anybody asks you, tell me you sign a Def Jam. But even that process took like almost a year and a half. Um oh, and it's and it's funny because I saw Tom Silverman recently, and when we were going around with our demo the final time before we were making our decision because we had gotten a, a, a record contract from Def Jam. It was not good, but it was the only one we had. So our lawyer at the time was like, look, let's just do one more pass with every label. And if they say no, you take the bird in the hand. And it was a horrible deal. It was a hard, they took, they were gonna take half our publishing, give us no advance in perpetuity. Uh, meaning forever, you know, the deal, it was just a horrible deal, but it was the only deal we had. And we went to see Tommy Boy and we went to see Tom Silverman and uh, Dante Ross at the time, who was a friend at the time, yep. was at Rush and now over there and brought us for a meeting. And when I told Tom what the deal was, he, I'll never forget him saying this to me because the person he mentioned was not only a dear friend, but a mentor. He said, yeah, I, I can't sign third base for that. I can't, I can't sign third base for that. Like, how am I going to tell Stetsasonic and Daddy-O that I gave third base more money than them? This is what Tom told you? Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Hey. I was like, all right, what am I going to say to that? So, so you already have a trash deal. Trash. You go to Tom. Trash. And I'm like, we went to everybody. We went to Fred Maneo at Select Records. We went to Aaron Fuchs. We went to, I mean, we went to every 
label there was in New York. We went to Profile, saw Corey Robbins and Steve Plod, Mickey. We went to Jive. We went to Ele- and we went to every label. No, 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 no. And when we, and the one thing I, re- I remember about Tom Silverman is he said, I, "How am I going to justify giving you guys more money than I give Stetson Sonic?" Because you don't have to tell them what you gave me. I'm not, you know, like, what, what do you want me? I'm 21 years old, motherfucker. What are you asking me for? Like, I'm a kid, <laughs> barely 20 years old. What are you asking me for? But anyway, so we wound up taking the deal with Def Jam. And I tell people that, you know, this year we got our rights back to the album and we're still kind of working out the paperwork and getting our royalties back and getting our rights back. Stay, stay there for a second, because I want to help people understand this. There's a 35-year rule in hip-hop. No, in music. Not just in hip-hop, music. music. Excuse music. Me, in, in music. Music. Correct. It's called the copyright law. 35 years, the copyright reverts back to the original recording artist, not the executive producers, not the producers, the artist. Artist retains 100% of their rights of their music after 35 years. All you have to do is submit the paperwork. It's, you, you have a two-year window either seven years or two years to do it. Um, So there's a good chance that when I get it back, it'll be the first time I see a royalty from any of my music in 35 years. That's insane, Serge. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it's insane, but it's so indicative of so many of the deals that legends have signed, huge artists. because those were the deals that were given out back in them days. It just was what it was. And if we're talking hip hop specifically, we're in the 50th year hip hop. This is the most streamed genre of music on planet earth right now. It is a multi-billion dollar industry. But back in those days, it wasn't even a proven art form. Just to be, you know, just to be fair. So, so it's unfortunate that so many artists like yourself sign these horrendous deals. And here it is, 35 years later, will be the first time. I mean, you clearly said, I didn't even get an advance. But now it's the first time you're getting a royalty check from your music. Insane, bro. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.